Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the 22nd Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Berter. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. As we celebrate, celebrate God's love for us, we call to mind the obstacles to that love. We ask the Lord to forgive us. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to reconcile us to yourself and to one another. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You came that we might have a new and abundant life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption. Look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can learn the counsel of God? Or who can discern what the Lord wills? For the reasoning of mortals is worthless, and our designs are likely to fail. For a perishable body weighs down the soul, and this earthy tent burdens the thoughtful mind. We can hardly guess at what is on earth, and what is at hand we find with labor. But who has traced out what is in the heavens? Who has learned your counsel unless you have given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus the paths of those on earth were set right, and we were taught what pleases you. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. You turn us back to dust and say, Return, O children of men. To your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, or like a watch in the night. O oh Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. You sweep them away like a dream, like grass which is fresh in the morning. In the morning it sprouts and is fresh, by evening it withers and fades. 
O Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. Then teach us to number our days, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Turn back, O Lord, how long? Show pity to your servants. O Lord, you have been our refuge from generation to generation. At dawn, fill us with your merciful love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us. Give success to the work of our hands. O oh, give success to the work of our hands. O oh, Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to generation. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. Beloved, I, Paul, an ambassador and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own free will. Perhaps this is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, receive him as you would receive me. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Seed to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your face shine forth on your servant and teach me your decrees. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you. At that time, Great multitudes accompanied Jesus, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, and even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not bear his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. For which of you? Desiring to build a tower, does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it begin to mock him, saying, This man began to build, but was not able to finish. Or what king, going to encounter another king in war, will not sit down first and take counsel, whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him who comes against him with 20,000. And if not, while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an embassy and asks terms for peace. So therefore, whoever of you does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Jesus it's been almost 45 years since the death of Steve Biko at the hands of the security police. Not many people know that he was shaped in part by the Catholic education he received at St. Francis College in Marion Hill. 
He then went on to become a key figure in the struggle against apartheid. He was a man who was prepared to suffer and die for his ideals, for the vision of a South Africa where all men and women were equal. For this reason, for many people, he is a secular saint and martyr. He said that it's better to die for an idea that will live than to live for an idea that will die. Let me say that again. It is better to die for an idea that will live than it is to live for an idea that will die. This is possibly the same idea that Jesus was trying to get across to those disciples who are following him, but following him for all the wrong reasons. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. He was on the way to the cross. And there following him were people and their hundreds and thousands following him on his road to the cross. He knew where his road was taking him to. They did not know at all. And that's why he stopped. And he turned around and he, and he said to them, Do you really know what you are doing? It seems to me that this crowd of people followed him for a whole range of reasons. They were the hungry who wanted to be fed, the sick who wanted to be healed, the poor who wanted to be rich, and the dead who, according to their relatives, wanted to be revived. And there they were, all following him enthusiastically, full of hope, and very interested in the good things of life. He stopped them and he said, Are you sure you are willing to walk my way? Do you know where I'm going? Did you count the costs? And are you willing to pay them? His followers had misunderstood him. They were following him with their old ways of thinking. They wanted to profit from him, to get more things, a better position in the old order, to get rich, to get healthy, to get a security which the world had never been able to give them. Jesus wanted to give them another life within another vision. He wanted a change. Well, they also wanted a change, but they wanted a different change to the one that Jesus was thinking of. They were only thinking of themselves, their families, their lives, their possessions. But he was thinking of the whole kingdom of God, the kingdom of people, the kingdom of the whole of humanity. He was thinking of humanity as God's family on its way to its final destination. And he was thinking of a totally different change to the ones that they were thinking of. In our own country, we have gone through remarkable changes. And yet we have to ask ourselves, has our human condition changed? Have our hearts changed? Have we become less selfish and less corrupt? Have you become more concerned about justice and poverty? I suspect you already know the answers to those questions. Jesus turned around to all who followed him and asked, Did you change your option when you decided to follow me? Are you willing to think now in terms of the kingdom of God? Are you willing to give up your old ways, your very own self, your corruption, your possessions? 
Can you do that? That's the question he addressed then, and he addresses it now. The lesson is, don't try to build a new city and world if you're not willing to do that. You will shed much blood, and it will all be in vain. Do not start a revolution or a war if you are not willing to change. Nothing would be won unless we first changed our own hearts. A man like Steve Biko was willing to die for an idea that would live, and he did. Now, the dramatic romantic within me is tempted to ask you a similar question. But I think a better question to ask is this. Are you willing to change yourself? How you relate to other people? How you live in the world and use its resources so that our world becomes a more just and compassionate place? Or put more simply, are you prepared to love and follow Jesus? Now, brothers and sisters, we profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now call upon the Lord our refuge in every age, and offer fervent prayer for all those who are in need. That the Lord's gracious care will sustain the church in its witness to the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's gracious care will protect the rulers of nations and their people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's gracious care will deliver the poor and the oppressed from suffering. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Lord's gracious care will become everlasting life and joy for those who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray with the Pope that the death penalty which attacks the dignity of the human person may be legally abolished in every country. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, your Holy Spirit guides us on the path of discipleship. By our prayers... Renew the power of that Spirit in every heart, so that we may judge wisely the things of heaven and earth. We ask this through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit to the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. This will be God the mingling of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit to the vine and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, be pleased with this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our in all God's holy church. Almighty God, you give us the gift of true prayer and of peace. Grant that through this offering, we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of this sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God, Almighty Father, for all that you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again, adversaries join hands, and peoples seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love, revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord gives way to mutual peace. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give up his life to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and then he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, 
the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. To be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Father, we humbly ask you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, fill us with his Spirit, the Spirit who takes away everything that separates us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Boti Tlakale our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who've died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your spirit. We share with one another a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take, take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. 
His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved Son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Thanks be to God.